thank you all for coming to listen to our presentation uh, tonight. And for the opening, I would like to invite you to stand and have the opening song. And let us all sing together the hymn, There is a Balm in Gilead. Our Father which art in heaven, we come before thee in this minute. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to worship you in freedom. We thank you for health. We thank you for the beautiful time that you have provided to us to come together and to listen to your word. We ask thy presence to be among us. Bless each one of us that listen to this word. Open our hearts and open our minds to be able to clearly understand the message that we will receive. We ask to bless us and help us that as we assimilate the spiritual food, to be able to practice them in our life, to share them with others, and all together to prepare for thy soon coming. We ask all these things not because you are worthy, but in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
now again thank you all for uh, coming to attend the program tonight and I would like to introduce uh, brother Demi Pintia the speaker of the hour and the title of his presentation it's entitled there is a balm in Gilead happy Sabbath to everybody Hope that we will all be blessed as we gather together to listen from the Word of God and a special message that He has to give us. And this message is so old, is dating from the time of Jeremiah. And this message never lost its importance and its value. And by God's grace, we'll, we'll present it today also. And may God help us that as we present it, the Holy Spirit may impress us and accept it and live by it to praise God from healthy body and healthy mind. <clears throat> the title is, There is a Balm in Gilead. And I, like I mentioned, it's dating from Jeremiah 8, verse 20. And the Bible says, The harvest is past, the summer is ended and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? So this is a million dollar question. And I don't know how many people uh, are willing to answer this question. But I have some answers here and hope that we will all learn and uh, accept these answers. And of course, as you learn them, we may practice them in our life. So the sickness of the daughter of the people of God may be gone and we may be healthy people. Who have the answer? to this question. So there are different kinds of balm for different kinds of health problems. So today we will consider some of the most important kinds of balm of Gilead. And I don't know if any of you ever have a chance to Google or to do some research on these uh, trees or, or uh, leaves in the, of the Gilead from which the bombs are made. So I, I have some pictures here too. And uh, there are different kinds of bombs for different kinds of diseases. So each disease needs different kinds of balm. And to me, the most important disease is sin. And so for this uh, sickness, for this disease, there is also the most important balm. And the next uh, important uh, disease is intemperance. And the next one is indigestion. And the next one is many different kinds of sickness and diseases. So we'll try to answer some of the questions to some of these uh, uh, diseases. And may God help us that as we study them, we may learn how to apply them to our body and to our soul. The balm for sin, Jeremiah 8:14. The Lord our God had put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no, no good came, and for time of health, and behold, trouble. For I will send serpents Cultrices among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, says the Lord. Wow, this is interesting. Now, instead of healing, because God intended to heal his daughter, and God provided balm of Gilead for them, <clears throat> and yet they will not accept it. And because of that, God is bringing us something else. It says here, serpents and cockatrices, which will not be tamed, will not be charmed, but they shall bite and kill you. 
So this is very dangerous, very scary, because God is long uh, patient with us, and we want finally He see that there is no hope for us to accept His ban, then He sending something else to us. In this case, He's uh, sending serpents. Says here in the uh, Ministry of Healing, it is not the Creator's purpose that mankind shall be weighed down with the burden of pain, that his activities shall be curtailed by illness, that his strength wane and his life be cut short by diseases. But all too frequently the laws established by God to govern the life are flag flag flagrantly transgressed. Sin enters the heart, and man loses sight of his dependence upon God, the source of life and health. Then follow the penalties of transgression. And the first one is inflammation. Then is sickness, then degeneration, pain, and death. And it's very interesting that the inflammation is the first thing that comes. And then sickness and degeneration and pain and that. So we have to be very careful what to do and what we should not do to avoid the inflammation. God would have his people clearly understand that they will be visited according to their obedience or transgression. Wow! So God would have his people clearly understand this, that he will visit us according with obedience or transgression. So we have to be very careful what we do. Wickedness and disease have increased with every successive generation. The land has labored under the curse which man has brought upon it because of continued disobedience. Continued disobedience for 6,000 years. Man is still living in rebellion. Man is still living in disobedience. The world languished and faded away. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. So we see what people have done. And this is, these are God's uh, laws and ordinances. And uh, man is so bold that he have the courage to do away with all this, to destroy God's ordinances and laws. Therefore had the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Many marvel that the, the human race have so degenerated physically, mentally, and morally. They do not understand that it is the violation of God's constitution and laws and the violation of the laws of health that has produced this sad degeneracy. The transgression of God's commandment has caused his prospering hand to be removed. So the prospering hand of God is removed from his own people. What can the other people say if God's own people have lost this prosperity that God was giving them for a long time before. And so it says here that man live in, in violation of, of God's constitution and of his laws. And so may God help us to pay attention to the constitution of God. Violating the constitution of any government is uh, punishable. And uh, man can be in trouble and condemned. How about when we violate God's own constitution, the constitution of heaven, the constitution of universe, which is much more important than the constitution of any land or any country. Another balm of Gilead for the intemperance in eating and in drinking, and the indulgence of base passion have been armed the fine sensibilities so that sacred things have been placed upon a level with common things. Wow, intemperance and eating, drinking, and indulgence and passion. If the Israelites have manifested a spirit of submission to God's wise prohibition, 
he would have removed from them everything injurious to their health and would have suffered no sickness to be among them. But he gave them what they lasted for because they would not submit to him. See Numbers chapter 11. Remember what happened chapter 11? People wanted to have flesh to eat and God gave them what they wished. And look what happened. And this is always happening. If God see that his people are stubborn people, they still want something that is not good for them and is not God's will, finally God said, okay, is this what you want? This is what you're going to have. And then people will suffer who knows how long and how hard. Another balm of Gilead is for the proper combination of food. Uh, very interesting, Council on Diet says here, knowledge in regard to the proper food combination is of great, uh, great worth and it is to be received as wisdom from God. Proper combination is of a great worth. How many people today in the world realize this? And I see every time people come to me, new people, when I have to tell them, don't eat this, don't combine this with that, don't eat fruits and vegetables. They are all amazed. Wow, I didn't know that. And so then they start to, to change their life. And you know, I am so impressed, I am so glad, so thankful to God that they accept this and they believe. Finally, oh, I didn't know that. But uh, many more need to be informed about this. Do not have a great variety at a meal. Now, that's another thing, too. Um, not too many dishes at a meal. Three or four dishes are plenty. At the next meal, you can have a change. The stomach should not be compelled to take some kinds of food meal after meal. The same kinds of food meal after meal. So we have to change. Today, for lunch, we eat something. Tomorrow, we may eat something else. And so we can change every day, but not too many different kinds at the same time. There should not be many kinds of food at one meal. But all meals should not be composed of the same kinds of food. It would be much better to eat only two or three different kinds of food at a meal than to load the stomach with many varieties. Many are made sick by the indulgence of their appetite. So many varieties are introduced into the stomach that fermentation, number one, is the result. This condition brings an acute disease, an acute disease, fermentation, acute disease, and death frequently follow. You see how the deaths come? Fermentation, acute disease, and then death. And people die so soon and so fast, in many cases that they don't know why and how come they die so fast. They never told anybody, anybody that this is a bad thing to do. This condition brings an acute disease. What is acute disease? It's not something that drags a long time, but fast, a short time. And then that frequently follow fast. So my big question here is, because says here so many varieties introduced in the stomach produce fermentation. My question is why fermentation? And no, you won't hear this from doctors or from nurses or from dietitian or from anybody else about the fermentation. Disturbance is created by, number one, improper combination of food, which causes fermentation, which set in. The blood is contaminated and the brain confused. You see what happened? When fermentation set in, blood is contaminated and the brain is confused. So when the brain is confused, brain don't know what to do anymore to protect you, to defend you from diseases, from acute disease and death. Says here, the habit of overeating or eating too many kinds of food at one meal frequently causes dyspepsia. 
Serious injury is thus down to the delicate digestive organs. So there are many organs, stomach, intestine, large, small intestine, liver, pancreas, and all these uh, are very important organs. And all these are injured by fermentation when we eat bad combination of food or too much food. <clears throat> The excessive amount of food eaten or the improper combination does its injurious work. Suffering is the consequence. Disease takes the place of health. And I have so many patients coming to my clinics that they suffer for so long with their abdomen pain, abdominal pain, and lower back pain, and upper back pain. And all this is because these digestive organs are all affected and they are inflamed and suffer and suffer and they have injury and they go from doctor to doctor, pay for this medication, for that treatment and never change the condition. Disease takes, takes the place of health. So why fermentation? Because of bad combination. And all these together, they disagree. They cause fermentation, which is uh, acidity in the stomach, acidity in the whole digestive system. And so fermentation is the number one enemy of unhealthy eating. Now, next one is fast eating, war in the stomach. Another cause both of ill health and of inefficiency in labor is indigestion. It is impossible for the brain to do its best work when the digestive powers are abused. Many eat hurriedly, too fast, of various kinds of food, which set up a war in the stomach and thus confuse the brain. You hear that? The war is set up in the stomach because that's where the food goes, different kind of food, combination, uh, amount. And when that war starts in the stomach, next the brain is confused. And now the brain don't know what to do, how to intervene to, to protect you, to save you. When fruits and bread together with variety of other foods that do not agree are crowded into the stomach at one meal, a disturbance will be created. So I tell many people about this food combination and the quantity of food. And I see more and more people are willing to accept to change their diet. And they tell me how good they feel and how happy they are. Physicians should seek <clears throat> to direct the mind of their patients to Christ direct the mind of their patients to Christ, the physician of soul and body. So we see that uh, man, we are only trying to help physically, uh, spiritually too, if, if it's possible, but actually Christ is the one that heals mind, body, and soul. So that which physician can only attempt to do, Christ accomplishes. The human agent strives to prolong life. Christ is life itself. How beautiful. We strive to prolong life. This is something, something very nice. Uh, I think this is the most beautiful work that we are entrusted to do, to help people to regain health, to regain happiness, to regain life. But uh, truly and, and uh, surely, Christ is the only one that could do that more than what we could. Said so physician can only attempt, but Christ accomplishes. The human agent strive to prolong life. Christ is life itself. He who passes through the death to destroy him that has the power of death is the source of all vitality. There is a balm in Gilead and a physician there. How beautiful. How Interesting it is that there is a balm in Gilead and a physician there. And we just need to look for that physician. 
we need to look for that balm of Gilead. And like I mentioned earlier in the beginning, there are different kinds of balms for different kinds of problems. And I have here different kinds of balms, uh, cans, and even plants from, the, from Gilead that I was interested to see, hey, what these uh, plants of Gilead look like. And so I have some pictures here to see how those plants look like and different kind of balms. But uh, there is a balm in Gilead. We don't have to go now to Gilead there to look for these plants. I found them on the internet. Won't help us any at all. But there is another balm of Gilead that we can find close by here. And Jesus is very close. He is a physician here and he can heal us if we accept his information, his instructions. Many eat too rapidly. Others eat at one meal food which does not agree. So different kind of foods combined together, they don't agree, and then guess what? They cause fermentation and war in the stomach and then confusion in the brain, remember? People should know how greatly they afflict the soul when they afflict the stomach. You hear that? When we afflict the stomach, we greatly afflict the soul. And so how could we have a faithful soul or be faithful people when we are afflicting ourselves, our stomach, probably every day? Who knows, every day we probably eat unhealthy food or bad combination. And how deeply Christ is dishonored when stomach is abused. Wow. Anybody thought about this? That we are dishonoring Christ when we abuse our stomach. Whether it's too much food, whether it's bad combination, or whether we eat too fast, or whatever the reason is, when we abuse the stomach, we dishonor Christ. And so Christ is not happy with us when we do that. And they should be brave and self-denying, giving the stomach opportunity to recover its healthy action. So when we see that we done something wrong, we messed up, we, we are hurting now, we have stomach problem, we have headache, different other kind of health issues, then we should realize, okay, well, I done something wrong. Uh, now, Lord, forgive me and give me another opportunity to correct this. Healthy action is needed. While sitting at the table, we may do medical missionary work by eating and drinking to the glory of God. Wow, can you say amen to that? Sitting at the table in the kitchen, right there, one of us, two of us, a family, small family, whatever, we could do medical missionary work. See, we always think about, oh, I have to go to Alabama or who knows where to do medical missionary work. But actually, we could do that right here in the kitchen of our own house. Medical missionary work. There we should study what to eat now and what to drink, if we want to drink something at the table, shall, shall we drink something? Should we drink while we eat? Shall, shall we wash down the food? Is that a good idea? Is that healthy for us? And if we study this here, this is a medical missionary work. The digestive organs have an important part to act in our life, life happiness. God has given us intelligence that we may learn what we should use as food. Shall we not study whether the things we eat will be in agreement or whether they will cause trouble? People who have a sour stomach, listen to this very careful. People who have a sour stomach are very often of a sour disposition. Have you heard that before? People of sour stomach they are of sour disposition. And look what it says here. Everything seems to be contrary to them. And they are inclined to be peevish and irritable. If we would have peace among ourselves, 
we should give more thought than we do to having a peaceful stomach. Wow, isn't that amazing to have a peaceful stomach? And if we have a peaceful stomach, no irritation in the stomach, or no sourness in the stomach, will not be over sour, uh, sour uh, moods. And so we'll have a happier, healthier life among ourselves. So we need to study this very uh, carefully, how to have a proper combination and a healthy stomach. Fruits and vegetables. It is not well to eat fruits and vegetables at the same meal. Maybe we all know this by now, but uh, since it's here belonging to this uh, balm of Gilead, we'll repeat again. The use of both will often cause distress and inability to put forth mental effort. It is better to have the fruits at one meal and the vegetables at another. <clears throat> now, what it says here? The use of balls will often cause distress and inability to put forth mental effort. So, fruits are healthy, vegetables are healthy, and yet when we eat them together, we'll have distress and inability to put forth mental efforts. And eating healthy. And you may think, well, I don't know what's wrong with me. I eat healthy. I eat fruits, I eat vegetables, and yet I have headache, I cannot think, I'm this and that. But look, the problem is bad combination, eating them together. And now it's a big question, why? And the answer is alkaline and acidic food does not go well together. We should never eat them together. Fruits and vegetables taken at one meal produce acidity of the stomach. You hear that? Then impurity of the blood results. And the mind is not clear because the digestion is imperfect. So if digestion, the digestion is imperfect, then the mind is not clear. The thinking is not perfect. And many problems start to take place. You should understand that every organ of the body is to be treated with respect. Wow, this is very important. We cannot say, oh, uh, this organ is not so important or the other organ is more important. Every single organ should be treated with respect. And if we do that, then they will all work in harmony together. And I believe that we all know that there is a f uh, food chart combining uh, chart for a uh, healthy combination and uh, I suggest you buy one of that if you don't have one and put it on the kitchen wall and every time you may think to combine something together take a look at the chart and see is that a good idea to eat this and that and the other together. Rich dessert and vegetables, puddings, custards, sweet cakes and vegetables all served at the same meal will cause a disturbance in digestion in the stomach. Now, I think we all know this, this also, but uh, it's not, not uh, bad to uh, repeat them. Uh, eating them all together, says here, will cause disturbance in digestion of the stomach. And then, remember earlier, when you have sour stomach, then the brain is also affected. So it's not just the stomach, but everything. And when the brain is affected, the whole body suffers, the whole body is in bad mood. And it says here, sugar and milk. Far too much sugar is ordinarily used in food. Cakes, sweets, puddings, pastries, jellies, jams are active in causes of indigestion. Active causes of indigestion. So we have to pay a attention to this indigestion, these articles of food. Especially harmful are custards and puddings in which milk, eggs, and sugar are the chief ingredients. The free use of milk and sugar taken together should be avoided. And again, counsel on diet and food. We have to take more attention, pay more attention to this book, because if we do, we'll be happier and healthier 
and many uh, illness that so people are suffering from will be gone. Rational care and good food. Now, this is something interesting here that uh, I don't know why it doesn't happen, but it says here, institutions for the care of the sick are to be established where those who are suffering from diseases may be placed under the care of God-fearing medical missionaries and be treated without drugs. So this is, uh, this is a big uh, encouragement here. Institutions, plural, for the care of the sick should be established. Shouldn't only be one or two, one in Tennessee and one in Georgia, but should be probably every state or, or at least every other state, but institutions should be uh, established. And here, God-fearing medical missionaries should treat these people without drugs. To these institutions, there will come those who have inherited or brought disease upon themselves by improper habits of eating and drinking. And a simple, wholesome, palatable diet is to be provided. And so it is, brethren. I see this every day. New people come, and these people are all suffering, like says here, of different kinds of diseases. Because they brought the disease upon themselves, or they were born, and now they are inheriting this sickness and these diseases. But whatever the case is, if they come there after the first treatment I perform on them, they feel amazingly well. And now they believe it doesn't take weeks or months to get better and spend money day after day and still sick, but they get well fast. In 20 minutes, they go home feeling much better. And so uh, we, of course, I teach them how to eat healthy food palatable and wholesale, uh, wholesome food. And of course, uh, they are very happy when they see the results so fast. We don't need to keep uh, telling them because they are accepting the information fast. So more health and happiness centers are needed. And let's pray about that too, that uh, God will work uh, in such a way that more of these institutions will, will uh, be established. The balm of water. Now, there is another balm of Gilead, which is the balm of water. Thousands have died for want of pure water and pure air, who might have lived. This blessing they need in order to become well, if they would become enlightened and let medicine alone, and accustom themselves to outdoor exercise and to air in their house summer and winter, and use soft water for drinking and bathing purposes. Uh, I see this every day. People coming to me and they all are bad with water, drinking water. They are all telling me that, yeah, I don't drink enough water. I don't have time, I am so busy, and I'm guilty of that too myself. But this is what says here, uh, we have to accustom ourselves with the pure and healthy water. And this will make us healthy and happy, and will not drag uh, a miserable life or existence, but a happy life by eating healthy and drinking healthy. Another balm for water, with food combination. Many make a mistake in drinking cold water with their meals. Food should not be washed down. Taken with meals, water diminishes the flow of the saliva. And the colder the water, the greater the injury to the stomach. Now, what is the problem here? What is wrong with the water washing the saliva? What is wrong with washing the saliva? You see this, and I was shocked when I first started working in the hospital as a nurse, when I see people eating, eating, and then they wash the food down with water. And so Sister White is telling us here 
that it's not good to wash the food in the saliva with water. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with the saliva wash, being washed down? Saliva is loaded with enzymes, digestive enzymes. And if we wash those enzymes down and we are not chewing enough, we are not stimulating the salivary glands enough to release more saliva and more enzymes. And then, of course, the, the less the enzyme we have, the, uh, uh, the digestion is more impaired. So may God help us to understand this. It's very important to chew more, to stimulate the salivary glands, to get more di uh, digestive enzyme, and to have a better digestion. Ice water or ice lemonade taken with meals will arrest digestion immediately. And bes beside that, uh, the whole digestive system is chilled down and now no digestion can take place. And so now the all digestive system will have to stop and to warm up and use about 80% of our uh, energy to warm up the food before it can be digested. So we are delaying the digestion process and then we suffer and the whole body now is in deficit of uh, nutrients. So masticate slowly and allow the saliva to mingle with the food. And of course, it may take about two hours for digestion. The body will turn into a heater to warm up the food, thus wasting 80% of the body energy, which this is causing fatigue. And because of that, many people are tired, fatigued after they have lunch. They have no more energy to do anything, they just want to sit down or to lay down because no energy to do anything. Now, here we come to a million dollar barn of Gilead. And I don't know if anybody has heard about the million dollar barn of Gilead. And this is the colonic, cleansing the body inside, Matthew 23, verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but inside they are full of extortion and excess. Men and people are amazed to see what's coming out when I do colonic on that. So where is that coming from? Well, people are full of excess inside, and they have no clue. And doctors don't teach anything like that and people suffer the rest of their life. And so Jesus said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you clean yourself outside, but inside you are full of excess. So it's very important. This is the most important balm that we can use. In 20 minutes, you will see the difference in your health, your happiness, energy, and everything. Pain, inflammation. All goes away fast. Verse 26, Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So I want everyone to pay attention here. Jesus said, blind Pharisee, cleanse ye first that which is within. He doesn't say, oh, I'm going to clean you inside. No, Christ tells you and me and everyone, Cleanse ye first inside. That is our own duty. And if we do that, that's a physical cleansing. Christ will do the spiritual cleansing. So we have to do our part and Christ will do his part. One way to cleanse us spiritually is to pray to Jesus to wash us in his blood. But physical cleanse is done by special diet. And the most effective cleansing is in 20 minutes by having a colonic down. Cleanse ye first, says Jesus. That, that is our business. Uh, we cannot say, oh, somebody else has to clean us inside. It's our own business. And uh, now i like you to pay attention to this. There is much talking about constipation in the spirit of prophecy. I don't know how many of you have studied this, how many of you ever paid attention to constipation on spiritual prophecy? But there is a much talking about constipation. And I don't know why is still so much constipation in God's people. 
my people, the daughter of my, the, the daughter of my people, why is it not healthy? Something else here, olives may be so prepared as to be eaten with good results at every meal. The advantages sought by the use of butter may be obtained by eating of properly prepared olives. The oils in the olives relieve constipation. You see that? She's speaking about constipation. How many people ever pay attention to this? The oil in the olives relieve constipation. Of course, that is not a lot of oil, not a tablespoonful of oil. And for consumption and for those who have inflamed, irritated stomach. So this olive oil in the olives will relieve constipation, will uh, relieve the inflammation and irritation of the stomach. You see the problems where it start? In the stomach with a bad combination or too uh, bad uh, or too much uh, food at the same time. So no oil from second hand is to be used or from animal source for our consumption. So next place here, for use in bread making, the super fine white flour is not the best. Its use is neither helpful nor economic. Fine flour bread is lacking in nutritive elements to be found in the bread made from the whole wheat. It is a frequent cause of constipation and other unhealthful conditions. So again, Sister White is mentioning here about constipation. Another article of food that will cause constipation, white flour bread. And of course, uh, uh, different kind of other combination. All this will cause frequent constipations. And this is so sad because people are getting sick so many ways, so many times with constipation, and they have no clue that this is the problem, constipation. And they can go to doctor, they can go anywhere to get some relief, and guess what? They'll get medication, they'll get something else or antibiotic, but inflammation and constipation is still there. When properly prepared olives, like nuts, supply the place of butter and flesh meat, the oil as eaten in the olive is far preferable to animal oil. It serves as a laxative. Its use will be found beneficial to consumptive and it is healing to inflame, constipated, and irritated stomach. Wow, this is so powerful. This olive oil, in small amount, as it is found in the fruit, in the olives, it uh, serves as laxative, and then it's a healing to the inflamed, constipated, and irritated stomach. You see how many causes uh, are there in the stomach, how many problems, and these simple fruits, I mean uh, olives, will provide relief. This is very powerful balm of Gilead, if you will. And if we learn how to eat this, uh, she, she mentioned this in, in Council on Dying the Food, we should accustom ourselves to eat olives at every meal. That means we can eat olives with fruits or we can eat olive also with vegetables. So, this will serve as laxative, healing the inflamed, constipated, and irritated, irritated stomach. Four problems right away will be relieved uh, by using this uh, recipe. Now, here is a very interesting experience that I can relate to it. I have many, many children in this condition and many parents with children in condition like this. Sister wife says here, Mr. Smith called Sarah McEntefer to go up to their house about six miles to see what is the matter with his little boy. He is quite sick, he said. There is no physician to consult, short of Newcastle. We feel very sympathetic for the sick, Sister wife said. So Sarah went. And she returned, and she understood it was the cause 
a case of constipation. So look at this. Sister Sarah went there and she understood this was a case of constipation. Now the father did not know that his son is constipated. And I don't know, the mother knew it or not, but why people don't know that their children are constipated? And I have many parents, many mothers coming with their children, four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, ten-year-old, constipated, and they don't have a clue that their children are constipated and inflamed and sick because of that. And so, <clears throat> the method she used relieved the five-year-old sufferer. Isn't that amazing? Now, what school did she go? What kind of medical school did she follow or go to learn what method to use to relieve the constipation? And she has to walk six miles to the house. Then she saw what the problem. She prepared everything she needed there, passed, inexpensive. Didn't have to go to any store to buy anything or any ingredients. She did her job. And immediately, the five-year-old sufferer was relieved and happy now, and he could be go back to sleep. How happy was Sister Sarah, and of course, Sister, uh, uh, or the mother too, but also the parents, and uh, Sister White, of course, was happy. See, she said they always were sympathetic to the sick. And so, it is with me too. When I see these people suffering and they get relieved and they are happy, I'm so happy myself. So I have, like I said, many five-year-old, four-year-old from Ohio, from Indianapolis, even this summer, from Arizona, from Georgia, and other places, and parents have no clue what to do. And they, those children are taken from doctor to doctor and mistreated and abused and never get well. So <clears throat> there is a ban in Gilead that can be used for these kids and for the parents too. So they can all get released and they can all get well and healthy. So we need to learn and to teach many others how to take care of themselves. Another balm of Gilead says here, Sister White now, that I would really, really like to see this happening. We invite all our readers to improve their diet by eating granola and nut butter and by drinking caramel cereal. They are the great food corrective for indigestion and constipation. Again, Sister White, using here indigestion and constipation. We also invite you to assist this good enterprise by selling the food to others. Now, wouldn't that be nice to have sisters in our church to do just this? This kind of medical missionary work to sell this kind of food to people? To have a place and where they can sell this kind of food? and suggest many people to do this kind of health uh, work. I tell some of the sisters in our church, but so far I couldn't have, I didn't have success to, to convince anybody to do this. Like says here, assist this enterprise by selling the food to others. So let's pray God that this may be one goal and one plan for 2022. Conclusion, there are many forms from whom hope, there are many from whom hope has departed. Bring back to, the, to them the sunshine. Many have lost their courage. Speak to them words of cheer. Pray for them. There are those who need the bread of life. Read to them from the word of God. Upon many is a soul sickness which no earthly balm can reach, nor physician heal. Pray for these souls. Bring them to Jesus. Tell them that there is a balm in Gilead and there is a physician there. How 
what wonderful they can feel when they hear there is a Balman Gilead and there is a physician there. You can get well and healthy. All of us are called to do the work of Jeremiah. Keep this in mind, Jeremiah 8. What did Jeremiah do? What was he called to do and to say and to warn the people of God? Isn't there God in Gilead? Isn't there a balm in Gilead? Why then my, the daughter of my people is not healed? And why they are suffering and sick? So the same question God wants you and me to present to the people. <clears throat> All of us are called to do this work of Jeremiah. Will you accept the commission? It's my question. Because if we don't, we'll be responsible before God. Physicians should seek to direct the mind of their patients to Christ, the physician of soul and body. That which physician can only attempt to do, Christ accomplishes. The human agent strives to prolong life. Christ is life itself. He who passes through the death to destroy him that had the power of death is the source of all vitality. So see that we can attempt, we are called to invite people to the physician of the Gilead. Christ is this physician. We have our own part to do also, but we have to bring them to Christ. This is the only way that they can have life vitality, because Christ is life itself. Let's never forget that there is a balm in Gilead and a physician there. In my ocean prayer, amen. Thank you, brother, for taking the time and also for your enlightening words that inspire so many people out there. Let's have our closing hymn and sing together hymn number 411, Have You Been to Jesus?
our loving Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, this Sabbath afternoon, to thank you so much for the many blessings of the day. And we thank you so much for the message you gave us. We thank you so much for the balm of Gilead. We thank you so much for the physician that is there. And he is willing by love and lovingly to heal us and to give us life eternal here and happiness that also we may all bring others to this great physician, to this balm of Gilead, that all thy children may suffer no longer, but may be healed. Help us to answer the question that others may also be brought to you and together be happy, healthy, and faithful to you. Forgive all our sins and shortcomings in every which way we transgress the loss of health, in every which way we brought sickness or suffering upon ourselves and help us to learn how to eat, how to drink, how to work, and how to do and speak everything according with thy will that we may live a healthy, happy life. We thank you so much for all the information and help us that we may see no more. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for coming again and watching us and spending some quality time with us. And now we invite you to come again and spend some time, quality time with us tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. The topics will be Fresh Start, Your Community and Immunity. Thank you again and may God bless.